Hey, and welcome to Life by Abe. My name is Abe, and today we are going to answer the question of how much money should you save for moving abroad? All right, well, obviously you've been thinking about moving abroad, and at this point you've probably picked out a city or a country, at least a country, that you want to go to. To help you do your research, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. So we've got a few different categories. First, we're going to start off with flights, then we'll move into accommodation, then we'll move into transportation, getting around, then healthcare, and finally we'll wrap it all up with entertainment. After that, I will try to walk you through a little bit of how I would do it, picking a new city, picking a new country, and uh, going about uh, showing you how to pick your budget and set your budget for where you wanna go. All right, jumping right into it. First, we're talking about flights. Flights, You, when you book your flight, there are many different places that you can go to book the flight. Um, Google Flights, for instance, Matrix ITA, these are all areas that can help you find decent flights, and then you can go to the carrier themselves and book them, or you can go through flight aggregators or uh, you know booking, booking.com, things like this. I'm not sponsored by them, I'm just throwing those names out. Uh, but there are different ones for different areas, and you can kind of set yourself up with that. Uh, so when booking your flight, I would recommend budgeting for your flight there as well as a return flight as an emergency, as a backup, having that a little bit extra money set aside uh, in case anything happens and you need to go home quickly, uh, you have that those funds set aside. One thing a lot of people will overlook when looking to move to a new country or even just traveling are visas. Not every country in the world is it uh, free for you to enter as long as you have a passport. The visa is another step that each country uh, may require that you get on top of having your passport to enter. Some visas are free and other visas can cost you a few hundred dollars. Just depends on one, the type of visa that you're getting and two, uh, how long that visa is gonna be good for. Uh, each country is a little bit different. Example, I had a Brazilian pa uh, Brazilian visa for a while. It was a five-year visa. It cost me $150, but I was able to come and go uh, within the country as long as I was there for less than six months out of the year as a tourist. All right, so we've talked about flights. We've talked about visas. These are a few things. There's also a travel insurance that I would recommend on top of that, but there are a few ways around that, and I'll get to that in a little bit. All right, so now you've got your flight picked out, you know where you're gonna go, you've got the, 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 that part of your journey taken care of, and quite frankly, that is a diff difficult part to get started with. Next, you need a place to live when you land, so you have to figure out your accommodation. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna stay in hotels, or are you gonna crash around and do hostels? Are you gonna couch surf, or are you gonna get an apartment uh, in the location that you're going to? Uh, if you've never been there before, I would recommend getting like maybe an Airbnb or a vacation rental, something like that, to get you started and it's still going to be comfortable. Uh, in a lot of places, you'll have what are called uh, serviced apartments or furnished apartments, where they come with the bed, the dishes, everything you can imagine. All you have to do is move in. These are usually going to be a little bit more expensive uh, monthly than say just an empty apartment uh, because you're also paying for the furniture and the, you know the landlords want to make sure that they're getting their investment out of furnishing the house for you all right uh, with accommodation in a lot of places it's usually two to three month deposit on top of your rent uh, in the first month for you to move in if the landlord's cool, they'll split it up over two months, so you're just paying extra month uh, for your first two months uh, if it's a two-month deposit. Uh, if not, then you, all of that will be due right up front, and that's something that, that's an additional cost that you have to look at. Usually, though, if you want to avoid the deposits, uh, vacation rentals like the Airbnbs or, or hotels or hostels usually don't require a deposit, uh, but once you stop paying, you're, you're out. Okay. All right, uh, next we're gonna talk about uh, getting yourself set up once you have your accommodation. Getting your accommodation is great, and no matter whether you're doing a service apartment, or Airbnb, or hotel, or hostel, 
you're gonna want a few creature comforts around you. Uh, you're gonna wanna be able to take care of yourself with some toiletries. So paying for uh, toothpaste, if you haven't brought it with you, uh, toilet paper, small little things like this, those costs will add up and it's something that you kinda, you should think about before going. Otherwise, it's gonna put a damper on the other activities that you can do. All right. Uh, so we get you in, we get you into the country or the city that you're going to, we've got you set up with your accommodation. Next, you're going to want to get around, whether it's to get to and from work if you're working in that area, or just getting around in general to the stores, to the, the medicine shops, to the doctors, you know, to entertainment if that's what you're looking for. So you want to factor in uh, transportation costs as well. A lot of countries, a lot of places around the world, you have services like Uber, Lyft, Grab, Gojek, these uh, transportation services or even taxis, or you can rent a, a car for a, a day as a daily driver or just hire someone to be your driver um, in period. Uh, these all have different levels of cost uh, and different levels of, of comfort and convenience for you as well. Uh, so you can do that uh, here in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. Uh, you transportation is so readily available. You can kind of throw a a, a sponge because you don't want to hurt anybody. So no rocks. Like throw a sponge and you can pretty pretty much hit a driver. So having that access here is good, but not every place is like that. Uh, so. If you don't want to do that, you can always do the public transportation option, uh, buses or trains, depending on where you are, or get a bicycle. If it's a walkable city, you can also walk around and that's another way of getting around. Uh, these are all things that you need to look at when you're determining the place that you want to go. Uh, after that, you can also look at buying or renting a car or a motorcycle uh, to help you get around, go around, uh, you know, the world, whatever, get around the city, the country that you're in. Uh, you can do short-term rentals, one or two days, if that's something that you're interested to, or you can rent on a monthly basis. A lot of times, if you're in a touristy area, the one or two rent day rental will cost just as much as it would be for one month or of renting that same vehicle if you did a longer term. Just something to look at, something to negotiate when you're looking at uh, your transportation options. No matter where you go, I would 100% recommend getting a driver's license and the appropriate insurance for two reasons. One, you want to make sure that you're legal in that country uh, in driving and not breaking the law. This way you can stay there for longer and you don't have as much hassle. And two would be making sure that you're covered by your health insurance. So health insurance will not always cover you if you are in an accident, uh, whether it's the insurance on the vehicle or even your travel health insurance, uh, because you might be doing something illegal. So take a look at the laws and the regulations for the local area. There is an international driving permit that you can get and in a lot of countries that will allow you to drive in the, the country that if they accept the international driving permit. If they don't accept the international driving permit, then you have to look for other options. Um, again, I would recommend following the law. This way you're taken care of, you feel safe, uh, and you have that sense of uh, peace. Okay. Uh, now, talking about insurance, that's another cost that you're gonna have to look at would be health insurance and traveler's insurance. Uh, these can fall into different categories. The health insurance will cover you in case of emergencies. Uh, and depending on the type of insurance, it can even cover you for regular doctor's visits if that's something that you're looking to do. If you're looking to travel to better your health and have access to more affordable health care. Uh, so check with, you can check one with your credit card company. They may offer a health and a traveler's health insurance and international traveler's health insurance. If you book your ticket using their credit card, uh, there are some cards out there that will automatically put that on there. Uh, I would just read the fine print of your credit card contract and the promotions and, and all the, the bells and whistles. Uh, two uh, would be getting health additional health insurance. You can usually buy travel insurance through the airline and it'll cover certain things. 
Uh, but or you can even purchase like a traveler's uh, insurance if it's something that you plan on a trip you plan on being there for a while or if you plan on moving to a new country you can get this type of insurance as well uh, this will cover you in case of any emergencies and it, they're usually fairly decent and if you have that type of insurance it can cover you in a lot of different countries around the world if not all of them uh, again this is something that you can talk with an agent about and they can get you set up all right uh i would also recommend just checking my notes just i would also recommend that when you get this insurance information when you purchase it that you give this information to a close friend or a trusted family member in case anything happens you'll now have the the sense of mind or you know another person looking at it for you if you're a solo traveler someone else who can from the outside give that information so that you'll still be taken care of uh, for instance, here in Asia, a lot of the hospitals will not really operate on you or talk to you unless you have the money up front. Um, so this is something that you need to do. If you have that insurance, you, then your friends or family members can call the hospital, give that information so then they can get in touch with the insurance company and then you can get the treatment that you need in case you're incapable of telling them or handling this on your own. Okay. All right, so now we've talked about those few things the next big one we've got the boring stuff out of the way the next one's gonna be entertainment you you're going to this new place for a reason you're going to this new place to have a new adventure see some new things learn about a new culture take some classes eat some new foods maybe drink some new drinks uh, so you want to get out you want to enjoy yourself and you're gonna be excited it's gonna be your first month or two that you're overseas before you know anything and you want to enjoy this type of these type of things so you want to make sure that you have yourself set up on an entertainment budget to be able to handle uh, what it is. Now this completely depends upon you and how much you enjoy going out and what type of going out you enjoy. Some people will like the super luxury, super luxe life and you know that comes at a cost. Even overseas that can be expensive if not even more pricey than it would be back at home depending on what you want to do. So depending on how you like to go out and the types of entertainment you want to do, whether it's going to museums, art shows, you know, uh, opera shows, what have you, um, or even just taking a cooking class, this is all something that you should take a look at. You should plan to have two really big excursions every month. Uh, this way it just helps you with your mental sanity and helps you to uh, break in and not have so much culture shock when getting into a new place. And it's just fun. I mean, you went overseas for a reason. You're not going to just sit at home in the same four walls. You can do that back in whatever country or city. All right. So we've talked about that. Now, entertainment, that's another option. Again, like I said, that's completely up to you. You need to kind of budget that and see what is what piques your interest and how much that's going to cost. Hey, if you like this content so far, do me a favor, hit that like button. Is it there? That's probably over here. Whatever. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and uh, that notification bell so you're uh, notified when I'm uploading new videos. And if you want to know something, if you have any questions, do me a favor, drop a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to engage with you there. All right, let's get back into the video. All right, welcome back. Decided to change up the background to give you a little bit of motivation. Green means go, 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 get your flights, get your things going on. All right, so we're gonna take a look uh, at kind of a, a, a scenario, if you would. Any of the numbers, any of the things that you see here, uh, don't use them as your own research. These are what's happening right now and what I'm seeing. Uh, again, do your own research, see it from your side. Um, and, and and move forward, okay? All right, so we're gonna go over here to Google and we're gonna pop in, let's say, let's go from the middle of America, we'll go from Chicago O'Hare, and say you're gonna move to Vietnam, to Ho Chi Minh City, uh, which is where I'm at right now. All right, we're gonna want a one-way ticket. You can book a round trip, uh, however, if booking the round trip finding the date to go back unless you know the date that you're going to go back uh booking an open-ended ticket would re i think require an agent i don't know i've never actually tried it uh but that is something that you you can do uh so we're going to say one way and we'll say that you're going in the middle of oh wait no tets this year so 
or say that you're going in January, uh, let's say the second week of January, you're leaving on that Monday, uh, and that's when you're going. So we'll say January, uh, February 6th is when you're going. Give it a few months, it's a few months away. All right, and right now all of the prices are in US, or in VND, let's switch it over to USD, uh, so that you can see the prices from the US. Uh, all right, it's calculating up. All right, so we're looking at flights here. Uh, again, depending upon how you enjoy traveling, whether you like uh, spending a little bit extra time, doing a few extra stops, uh, and how long the stops are, these all can affect the type prices of tickets. Um, so we're seeing roughly, with the exception of this one, is just under 700 bucks, like six and a half hundred dollars. So let's go ahead and put that in. Let's say flight to SGN is, uh, let's round up, again, being conservative with the, the, the pricing. Let's say it's $700 uh, for that. Now let's turn this around to make sure to find out um, and we'll put the date out. Uh, let's say you, you spent a month there and you've decided, hey, this is not for me. Um, so we'll go to uh, March. Uh, we'll put it into March to get a return flight prices. Okay, yep, so here we're looking, the most expensive one without going crazy expensive is around $721. So we'll say $750 to return. All right. Uh, $750. Okay. All right, so we've got our flight taken care of. Uh, you have to look into visa cost. Now coming to Vietnam, I under, I know that some visas are gonna um, be, a, a, you know, like 20 to $40, whereas other visas can be a little bit more expensive. And I'm not really sure on the price of that. Let's say that you're coming here on a tourist visa, uh, which you can't do right now if you plan on working, you need to come here on a, a, a business visa. Uh, but the, let's just say the price for the visa is uh, about $40 if you book it in advance visa okay all right now we don't know about the insurance that's something that you're gonna have to research on your own I don't feel comfortable giving you that information and looking that up you'd have to find that information the travel insurance uh, and health insurance do that do your own research find your own trustworthy agent to do this this is just an example uh, of what we're looking at for the flights and getting you set up and then starting your your journey there all right, so we've got our flight. We've got that taken care of, uh, going there and coming back with a visa cost. And this is being, again, quite conservative on, on the cost. So now let's go and let's see about uh, apartments. Let's say you wanna be comfortable while you're there and you wanna do kind of like an Airbnb. Uh, mind you, vacation rentals in general, I'm using this, I'm not sponsored by Airbnb. But I think I might have a link if you want to click it and if you book something, you can give me a couple bucks. You don't have to pay anything. It's just you booking through Airbnb uh, and go. So let's take a look here. Uh, we're going to say, we're going to search for, uh, we're, nope, no, search destinations, Ho Chi Minh City, and Vietnam. And again, we're coming in in January of 2023. Uh, it'll take you a, a solid day to travel. So let's say you're checking in on the 7th and let's put it uh, that you're checking out on the 7th of March as well. Searching just so you can see some prices. Uh, this is all in VND. So let's switch it over to the USD. Da, da, da. Where is it? Da, da, da. There it is. Okay, give it a sec. There we go. All right, so you're looking at a whole apartment for a month, you know, 480, 420, uh, 409, 370. Oh, this one's got a pool uh, that's a little bit pricier, 888. 
Um, and again, these are these most likely will not require a deposit, so the prices can be a little bit more. And they're fully furnished, so it's a place that you can just kind of show up and, and start doing. You can share a bunk bed, uh, condo in District 4. All right, so you're looking, you're seeing prices from as low as like 300 and change uh, up to, you know, almost a thousand or over a thousand. Uh, so we'll say, let's go middle of the range, we'll say about $600 a month for rent. Um, you know, this way you're not going crazy. 600 a month in rent, obviously you can do it cheaper um, if that's something that floats your boat, uh, or you can do it far more expensive as, as you saw. Okay, uh, now if you do decide that you find a place, uh, you wanna do the deposit, uh, and that'll be the rent times two or times three uh, because two months deposit plus your one month rent. Okay, so deposit rent times three. Uh, that's something for you to take a look at later. Okay. And that's again something you can negotiate with the through the agent uh, with the landlord if uh, you are if you find some place that you do want to rent. Um, you know, two to three months or two, one to two months is usually the norm. We're going to, again, we're going conservative. If you have a little bit extra money, that's good. All right, and now let's go check out and see about renting a motorcycle, motorbike, motorbike rentals uh, duh, duh, duh. in Ho Chi Minh City. All right. Uh, again, I want to make sure to emphasize, get your insurance, make sure that you have your license, that you're legal to drive, uh, check the laws um, uh, of the country that you're going to. Here in Vietnam, uh, you, while you will, you do have your home license if you're here for a certain amount of time. Uh, it's a little weird, it's a gray area where your license might be valid, but if you don't have the international driving permit, it might not be recognized. Um, your license might not be recognized, but if you have the international driving permit and your license, then you can be recognized. Uh, it's something that you need to take a look at. I personally have a Vietnamese driver's license here, uh, so I'm not too worried about that. I got that, you know, my first few months here. All right, so let's take a look here. Let's go to uh, the third one down. Um, again, I am not affiliated with this company in any way. However, they we're just using this to do some research. So we're gonna go to bike rental. Okay, let's see. And we see some some rentals here. Uh, let's, let's open this up a little bit so we can see. All right. Okay, let's say let's say this bike this bike here it looks fairly big so if you're a big person like me this looks like something that you can handle again this is completely on you and this one's a little bit pricey so it works out we can be a little conservative even with something a little bit nice and luxury all right so we're looking at roughly 3 million VND per month let's see what that converts to USD okay to do, do, do. All right, so that's $120.87 per month. Let's say $125 per month, just to keep the numbers nice and even. All right, um, and let's see, is there, is there a deposit? Normally with motorbikes, uh, the, the companies will ask for a deposit. Um, we're just scrolling through, there's our bike, let's see, okay, no, can't do that, usually there is a deposit, um, uh, not sure, well, you know what, let's just say that it's one month, one month of rent, um, so we'll, uh, motorbike rental per month, 125 per month, plus uh, deposit another 125 okay all right uh, so that helps us with that budget now that's getting around uh, on our own if we want to see kind of what the cost of living would be in an area uh, 
we can just kind of Google that as well. And this way, this will help with, uh, with your entertainment budget in Ho Chi Minh City. Okay, boom, here we go. All right, let's see. So we've got this uh, this website here called Nomad List. I'm not sure. I, I didn't use them. I'm, again, not affiliated with them uh, for seeing anything. Okay, so we're saying cost of living for a nomad this is around $1,300 a month. Cost of living for an expat is about $1,200 a month. For a family, you're looking at $3,075 uh, $3, a month, $3,100 a month. Okay, uh, and it's giving us some prices here. Airbnb, median price, $1,017. Uh, one bedroom studio, $800, hotel. So this is another way for you to do a little bit of your, your research when going around. Uh, again, don't just trust one site. Do a little bit of research. See what other sites are out there, what other uh, things are saying. Uh, this Numbio, I've used them before um, uh, to get yourself set up. Uh, let's see here, it's saying a family of four is around 41 million, a single person, estimated cost, monthly cost without rent is about 11 million uh, VND. Let's switch that currency over to the USD, it's making it a little bit easier for us. All right, so single person, a monthly estimated cost without rent is like 500 bucks roughly. Uh, family of four is $1,600, uh, $1,700, uh, and uh, it's 64.5% less expensive than New York City, uh, and the rent is 85% less. So looking at meals, inexpensive restaurant, $2 uh, for an expensive mid-range, uh, three course for two is like 25 bucks. So these are all different, uh, these are the different things that you can see, the prices roughly of, of what everything is uh, here in, in the city. So you can use these sites and kind of average it out. Here we're seeing uh, both of the, the websites said that it's gonna be between 500 and like $1,500. So we'll, uh, we'll just say it's an even $1,000 a month in spending and spending. Uh, again, that depends on you and the type of things that you like to do and how much those things cost okay so do that research on your own okay uh, entertainment and food or just living expenses okay. all right so all of this together uh, and remember um, remember you are looking to, to do this uh, you're looking at moving on your own, so you want to make sure that you're comfortable with everything that you're choosing. So do that research in advance. It doesn't mean you're going to get exactly that, but you know you can get something fairly close, and you'll have something to compare it to. So we're looking at a $700 flight to uh, Ho Chi Minh City, uh, plus let's say your emergency having to return flight a month later. Uh, this again depends on you if you're interested if you want to take that risk you can and not get the flight you can do that if you if you know what you're doing uh, but if not have this set aside it, you know it's just this nice safe peace of mind uh, plus the visa it's gonna bring you up to a whopping total of 14 1500 bucks all right rent is gonna be 600 for your first month um, uh, plus the 1500 there we go. So now you're at 2100. Uh, now, if you decide that you want to rent, and they're asking for another two months of deposit, that'll be another $1,200 uh, for you there. Um, so now it brings you up to 2700. Uh, and this is if you're coming here and you have work lined up, you have things set up for you. If you don't. If you don't know uh, if you're going to be working or where your next check is going to come from or your next income is coming from, then you might want to save up a little bit more than, than what we're calculating up now. But this is just kind of showing you for your first month. All right. So you were looking at that. Then we're looking at motorbike rental. So motorbike rental together, one month is $125, two month uh, plus the deposit. So we'll say uh, 250, uh, 125, 125, 250 for your motorbike rentals. Uh, and then let's say your living expenses. Oh, 
something messed up there. So 2,700 is what it was at, uh, plus your two, uh, you know, 2,700 plus your 250. Uh, that's going to bring you up to uh, almost 3000 3, plus you want your living expenses of $1,000 is what we're looking at there. So you're already up to $4,000 for making that move. And that's not including like the small little necessities like the toiletries or any other things. Maybe you can build that into your living expenses and just do a few th less things. Um, and then on top of that, you're going to need your health insurance. And again, check with your credit card companies. Maybe even your cell phone plan has some type of travel insurance if you're traveling internationally. Um, something to look at, uh, but that's an additional cost. I don't know how much it would be. That's something that you'd I'd recommend going and talking to an agent about uh, and getting yourself set up. All right, so you're looking at around $4,000 uh, to start your move. And again, if you want to add a little bit extra, pad it a little bit, give yourself an additional month of savings, you can do that too. We saw that the living expenses are $1,000 a month. Uh, that's what we estimated. So you can always add in another $1,000 a month um, and then you know another $600 for rent. Uh, for the next month and then as you go on those prices those those costs should start to go down after you've been there for a few months because you've purchased everything and you're back in your comfort zone all right well that's going to wrap this up for us here today if you've liked this video do me a favor hit that like button it'll help me out a lot uh subscribe if you want to see more content like this and uh hit the uh notification bell so that you're updated on when i'm making that move when i'm uploading new videos and telling you new things all right until the next time stay safe stay awesome peace